Hi everyone, welcome to the Berwick Public Library. We have a very informative program for you tonight, today on this very rainy, cold January day. Um, we have a special guest today to talk about his organization that he funded, and it's called Heart to Heart, Services for People with Age. Let me welcome Judd Knox. Thank you, Judd, for coming. Thank you. And I mean to be respectful, but I'm going to take my mask off because I probably wouldn't make it very long trying to speak to you through it. So I hope that's all right with those of you who uh, are here this afternoon. Um, I, I want to begin by uh, sharing with you uh, that I am no expert. <laughs> I am here uh, as much more as a friend and as a neighbor than someone who brings special expertise into your presence, okay? Um, my name is Jed Knox. Um, I've been hanging around in the area for a while. Some of you may know I was the administrator at York Hospital for almost 40 years. And uh, when I uh, left that position, I began some soul searching of what I wanted to do. I'm all my life been kind of a working guy and knew that I wasn't about to just hang out. And uh, I was trying to think of how I could do something useful and helpful and kind to others. And I did have sort of a, as a backdrop of that thinking my experience at the hospital and in healthcare for a number of decades. And one of the thoughts that I've had for some time, observation, opinion, has been that sometimes services for older adults aren't particularly well designed or well delivered to older adults. They're often services designed for other populations that are suggested will work for older adults as well. Um, so that was sort of uh, swimming in my head and I decided with not a lot of specificity that I wanted to start an organization to try to work with older adults. Now, depending on your definition or anyone's definition of older adults, I am one. Um, so I'm reaching out to peers and folks I know. Um, but I didn't have a great definition of what those services might be. I don't have any clinical background, so I can't do home nursing or home therapy or home technical work. So my wife and I started Heart to Heart as a not-for-profit organization intending to be responsive to whatever needs older adults expressed that we might be able to fill with the idea that over time we would learn our way about what was important and how, how we could really help people. So we did that, got ourselves started in uh, February of last year, and uh, sort of said uh, on the internet and to the public, here we are. If you need these kinds of helps, give us a call. Uh, contact us and we will try to respond. So for about a month or six weeks um, I took calls and chatted with people and had a variety of requests um, really covering a pretty broad spectrum. And I was having a conversation with an individual much more experienced than I in providing care for older adults. 
And she was being very supportive, but she also said, Judd, have you thought of providing transportation? And I sort of raised my eyebrows, and she said, the need is enormous. Oh, OK. So with that, I sort of opened up Heart to Heart, which is our organization, opened up Heart to Heart to say, we'll provide transportation, whatever you need. Doctor's appointments, errands, shopping, ice cream, whatever is important to you. Keeping in mind that my original premise was not that I knew what people needed, but that I was willing and we were willing to respond to what people told us they needed. So that same principle was applied to transportation. Well, my friend was right. We got very busy very quickly with requests for transportation. And the request really grew from word of mouth. Uh, I, we're a self-funded organization. Uh, Lori, my wife, and I really fund heart to heart. Um, so we're not, uh, as they say, we're not resource rich. So I didn't do a lot of uh, advertising or marketing, really pretty limited. But people chatting with other people about receiving services for us spread quite rapidly. And we are now doing, among our other services, we're now doing between 80 and 100 rides a month. Um, now, that might not sound like a whole lot. Let's see, 100 rides in 20 work days, five rides a day. Uh, the uh, interesting thing about rides is I, I'm not really trying to be just a taxi to get a person from one place to another. I really want it to be an experience that's worthwhile. Uh, I don't want it to be without personality, without warmth. I want it to be something that's enjoyable for me and for whoever is receiving the ride. And to do that uh, actually requires a fair bit of time to get from home to the person's home to the destination if it's a medical appointment, through the medical appointment, and then back home. Um, so it's a very busy time for us now. Um, uh, I'm probably working as many hours myself <laughs> as I did when I was working full time. No complaint. I enjoy it immensely. Uh, and uh, hopefully we're providing a service that people find uh, worthwhile and valuable. About two months ago or so, I recognized that given the trajectory of growth and, and requests for rides and other services, um, that I was about to be in trouble. And I was about to be in trouble because I couldn't keep up with the requests. One of the things I'm really lousy at is saying no. Uh, so I say yes, and then I look at the schedule and go, how am I going to do that? How am I going to be in Berwick and Wells at the same time? <laughs> so about two months ago, I started an effort to solicit more volunteers. Um, now, in due respect to everyone, um, I want to know the folks that are working for Heart to Heart. I, I want to know that they want to have experiences with other people. Um, yes, I want to know that they have a driver's license and that their automobiles are insured. But more importantly, I want to know that they have some passion for people and that they're real motivation for helping is kindness and being helpful to other people. So I insist on 
either knowing or interviewing anyone who provides services with heart to heart. Uh, again, that kind of reflects the principles of what I hope we are about. So now uh, we have about 15, maybe almost 20 now, other active drivers, which is wonderful. Uh, it gives us a great deal more flexibility. Um, yesterday, we had four drivers on the road almost all day uh, in different directions, actually from Exeter to Sanford to Wells to York to Kittery and the communities. Um, so I'm enthusiastic about that. Now, I happen to be the scheduler, I happen to be the dispatcher, and I happen to be a driver. So I'm not claiming that I do all those roles perfectly. Um, I've found that your car can be your desk. <laughs> uh, so I do a lot of, right from the, not while I'm driving, but maybe while I'm parked or while I'm waiting. Um, so uh, I am still very much learning how to do a good job at this. I hope I'm doing a good job, but learning how to do a good job at this and figuring out how to do a better job, keep working at that, uh, that all the time. Um, we, I think we're, uh, heart to heart is almost at the point of uh, having a pretty good idea how to provide transportation. Uh, the question in my mind now is how far to expand, and how far I don't mean miles, I mean number of requests and, and helping folks. Um, the demand is certainly greater than we're now fulfilling. And my, the question to me becomes um, how much time to spend scheduling, how much time to spend um, recruiting folks, and how much time to spend with folks. Uh, I share with you that my greatest personal rewards are with folks. So I'm a, a little bit trying to balance those sets of responsibilities. Um, I'm also, heart to heart is also at the point of reflecting, are there next services that we want to provide? Um, one that's, I think, right on the horizon is providing phone contact and companionship with people. Um, especially this time of year uh, and also because the pandemic has closed our lives in quite a bit. So the idea of uh, providing a flexible way for folks who are confined to their homes um, to have somebody to talk to. Um, so we're looking at that. Um, we do provide technology assistance to folks, folks who are, uh, need help with computers or phones. I have a couple of really excellent volunteers who work with folks to do that. I've got a service that actually provides uh, meals to folks in their homes, not Meals on Wheels, but a, a, another entity. Uh, I work with Neighborhood Network in York for home repairs. Um, I don't have a cadre of folks to do home repairs. Um, I think I'm okay at it, and I can do a fair amount of stuff. But we we can't. Uh, I can't spread myself that thin. I can't. I can't do that. But we connect with them. So, partnering with other services is a wonderful service out of Kennebunk called Vet to Vet, which provides uh, companionship, uh, partnership with veterans and uh, I actually have experience within my own family of the services they provide for older adults and uh, I have referred a number of people or helped make that connection for a number of people so it's not all about 
what we do and heart to heart and what we create, it's also helping people get connected to other services that are supportive uh, to them. So that's um, where Heart to Heart is today uh, with a great deal of flexibility. You can probably tell listening to me, I'm, I'm, I'm not a very structured guy. Uh, I did some research before we sort of opened the doors of Heart to Heart with an, a national organization, a national volunteer caregiver organization, and they're wonderful folks, and I learned a lot from them. One of the things I learned is that I wanted to respond to what other people needed. I don't want to say, this is what we're going to do, and your needs have to fit into that. So someone wants me to help them because they don't drive, take their pet to the vets, I do. Someone wants me to take them to town hall so they can pay their taxes, I do it. Um, I don't say, oh, we only do medical appointments or medical appointments are priority and I, only go, I will only take you here or I will only take you there. That, that's not how I work. Now, do we have some limitations? Of course. Uh, going to Boston is much too difficult to do. Um, I've done a couple of Portland trips, but it's very hard because it means I'm basically out of the communities for an entire day. Um, but um, I have no difficulty crossing the Maine-New Hampshire border. I haven't, at least yet, and unless something happens catastrophic, I'm, I'm fine with taking folks back and forth uh, to New Hampshire services and, and Maine services. So that's kind of where Heart to Heart is, and I think sort of where we're going, and I'd love to open it up to your questions, thoughts, ideas, um, suggestions. Um, because that's really, hopefully, one of the things that Heart to Heart does is listen to you and listen to others and figure out what to do. What towns do you cover, Judd? What is your regional area? Yes, please. The smile is not, is, is, uh, the smile is a reflection of my lack of structure. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I pick up people and give people rides in York, uh, Kennebunk, Wells, York, Kittery, Portsmouth, Elliott, South Berwick, Berwick, and North Berwick, and occasionally beyond. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little careful because um, I'll just give you an example. If someone residing in Kennebunk is going to a medical office in Portsmouth and I live in York, the time for me to go to York, to Kennebunk, to Portsmouth and a 40 minute appointment and back to Kennebunk and then to another ride, you can see what that means in terms of time. And I don't mind the time, it just means that if there are long rides, I get to help fewer people. And it, it's, a, it's a hard judgment to make. Is a short ride more important than a longer ride? So it's, a, it's kind of a juggling. So I'm pretty flexible, pretty flexible. I take folks from York to Wentworth Douglas Hospital. I take folks to Portsmouth Hospital and, and uh, pretty much doctors from Kennebunk to Portsmouth to Dover. Other questions? Yes, sir. Do you work only with individuals, or do you work through doctor's offices or hospitals who find somebody needs a ride? Uh, I, I work with organizations as well. And, what, and what's um, happening, thanks for the question, what's happening is, um, and I'm grateful for this, I'm getting more calls from physicians' offices and hospitals before the appointments are set up 
So they'll say, I have someone who needs transportation to an appointment to see Dr. So-and-so. Um, they need to come sometime within the next two weeks. What do you have in the next two weeks that I can match with the doctor's availability? That's fantastic because otherwise what I often get is a request for a ride in three days uh, at a certain time and I may already have two other appointments booked at that time. Um, so, and, and it's so hard for me to say, no, I, I, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't help you get to your cardiologist. I know that's important to you, but I, so um, I'm, I'm very thankful that some of the, uh, um, uh, some of the uh, doctor's offices are now doing that with me. And uh, some of the hospitals are as well. Some of the departments in the hospitals are now starting to call me, say, we have a person who's going to be discharged, they're going to need a lot of follow-up care. Um, is it all, do you think you could play a role in providing them that care? Would you provide this transportation? And if so, I will give that person your name. And so that, that's helpful, and it's, it's coming along. Um, I understand that physician offices and, and hospitals, medical care folks are very busy and have their own schedules, and they're trying to maximize their schedules. Um, but I certainly appreciate it when there's a little bit of room to find mutual times for folks. Because it's really the patient we're taking care of. It's really the person that's, uh, that gets sort of caught in between systems. So, Other questions? Yes, sir? How many days a week are you doing this? <laughs> uh, the rest of that is, do you set aside time for yourself? to go to your own appointments? Uh, I do. I, the question, the answer to the latter is I do, and, and the, the answer to it is um, good or bad, I love to be busy. I, actually, it's probably fair to say I love to have more to do than I can do, which maybe is not a good attribute, but probably accurate. Um, Three weeks ago, I think, on a Saturday morning when I was on the computer working some things, my wife said, you know you're working more hours now than you did when you were at the <laughs> hospital. And of course, my first reaction was, no, that couldn't be. And, but I thought about it. And uh, I'll, I'll share something with you that I'm, I'm this is a Judd life learning. So, as a manager, as an executive manager, I had the, the good fortune of asking this person to do something and asking this person to help me with this or referring this to that person or just having someone else helping me with a daily schedule. Well, when I turn for those folks now, it's me. <laughs> oh, I've got to set up the file system. Oh, I need to set up that spreadsheet. So I have a uh, new appreciation for the difference between having those resources available, those talents, which I'm grateful for in my past, and now well, you're going to have to figure out how to do that, Judd, so I guess that's how you're going to spend your Saturday morning figuring out how to do it. So uh, I, I spent a lot of hours, but I, I enjoyed a great deal, and I think I'm still okay. Now, there are folks who will tell you that Judd's always been out of balance, so if, if you know, from given that history, I'm probably still not that balanced, you know. <laughs> yes? <laughs> and I'm a realist, and I'm always um, thinking of the, the bottom line. How are you going to sustain this? Because there's so much need, and as a library director, I see it on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you know, the th we did a study here in Berwick on uh, through survey on the, the most needed um, 
we, we narrowed it down to three things. Transportation, housing, and communication. Mm -hmm. And those are the three most important things to people in this area through the survey and the things that we need to work on the most. And I couldn't agree more. Living in Maine, I don't care where you live in Maine, you better be able to drive a car and you know, own a car and keep it up and get yourself places because if we choose to stay here, that's the only form. You know, we don't have bus, we have minor bus routes that'll get you a few places. So sustainability in um, your company, to me, I would think comes down to like a lot of money because you're going to need a lot of help to keep this thing, once people start catching on, you said it, the need is so great. It, as a nonprofit, you know, there's grants, there's all kinds of donations. Like, ha are you at that point yet where you're going to have to think on the administrative level? You're good at that. So <laughs> I, I wonder how, what that looks like. Well, it's a really good question, and I'm not sure I have a really good answer for that question. Um, currently, I, I'm currently I'm pleased to say that uh, Lori and I are very committed to funding Heart to Heart from our basically from our private finances, and we're able to do that. Um, I won't discuss with you what my fuel bill looks like on a weekly basis for the car. But we're, we're managing that. And, and that's an election we've made to do. That, that's a choice that we've made. Uh, longer term, um, and we have received donations from some folks, but longer term, it does uh, beg the question about grants, municipal funding, those kinds of things. And I, I think that's a direction heart to heart could could go in um, a little hesitation by me about that is that now i get to make up the rules and i get to be as flexible as you folks have heard me talk about being and um, when i think of other funding i also think of um, rules and impositions on how we do things by other organizations. So I'm a little torn about that. You know, I can certainly see the benefit of collecting some organizations and some municipalities and saying, Here, here's a model we could make work for transportation for multiple communities. And, and multiple resources. I mean, because there are some other folks doing uh, transportation as well. So doing them collectively, it's probably some economies of scale that are fairly easily identified. Um, today, someone calls heart to heart and comes in on this phone and they talk to Judd and it's personal and they leave me a voicemail message or I call them back and I have some idea who they are, where they live, and they have some idea who I am. I enjoy that a great deal. I'm a little selfish. I enjoy that. There's nothing wrong with that. It's refreshing. <laughs> I'm, I, I don't know what it would be like if I organized heart to heart in a way that didn't include that anymore. or or diluted that? Uh, it's, a, it's a very good question. I'm, I'm not sure what the right answer uh, really, uh, really is. Um, I will say this uh, about sustainability. Uh, I have some wonderful volunteers, some folks that if I send out an email on Tuesday and say, I'm stuck on Thursday. I just committed to these and I can't be in all these places. I have folks who respond and say, I'll pick up that one. I'll, I'll pick up that ride. I'll do that. I'm, I'm available, um, which 
this is all volunteer. They're using their own cars and their own gas and their, all, their own time, which is remarkable. Uh, so I'm, I'm very grateful for that. So that proves that this, this all-volunteer, free-of-charge service can actually work. Uh, and that's another thing that I worry about in terms of sustainability if I were to shape it in a different form. Would it still be volunteer drivers? Would it still be people giving their time for free or would it become something different? Um, and could we still offer these services for free as opposed to having some sort of rate structure? So good, really good questions. Um, um, not sure that I have the experience to know what the best direction is yet. Other thoughts or questions? So you um, have, as you go along and you get more experience, you're making a decision uh, whether you will get other funding, if, the, if you can maintain it the way it is, if you can make connections with enough people for them to volunteer. I, I mean, I, are you trying to keep it more simple than get it more complicated with money, you know, financial funding coming in? I'm really trying to keep it personal. I'm really trying to, I'm really trying to be heart to heart. Uh -huh. I'm really not trying to be super transportation provider, but, if, so if you it, can. It sounds like, though, most of what you're doing now is transportation. Uh, uh, almost 85 to 90%. But even doing that transportation is done in a, in, in a, in a what I, I think at least, is an intimate and personal way. I talked to you about your appointment yeah. next Thursday. And I talk to you about your needs for going to the bank or for grocery shopping. Um, so it's not, not that you suggested this, but it's not just the slot. It's not just I have a transportation slot of an hour and a half on this particular day and you can get this slot. Um, so my my ambivalence that you've identified mm -hmm. is that I, I don't want to lose that. I was talking to one agency that I will not name, mm -hmm. and they said to me, oh, yeah, we have people call, but 4 o'clock Friday night, phone's off. Mm -hmm. I don't do that. Mm -hmm. I take calls Friday night or Saturday morning. It doesn't hurt me to pick up the phone and respond to someone. It's not that difficult. One of the systems that a lot of organizations use is a computerized system to put in your appointment. And then volunteers can go in. I don't know these systems well. And volunteers can then go in and identify which rides they'll do. Well, that's great. A lot of the folks that I provide support for are not adept with computers or not comfortable, let me put it that way, or sometimes even cell phones. Um, I don't want to make it more difficult for those who might already be some of the most vulnerable people, or maybe I shouldn't say vulnerable, some of the most needy folks. I don't want to create barriers of structure f for those folks. Um, so that's a create some of the ambivalence I have about how big, how complicated. You're right. I am a kind of a simple person and I like simplicity. Um, and you also, uh, it sounds like this is a lot of word of mouth. I've only, yes, I've actually done two newspaper articles and I think two ads, newspaper ads in the 11 months that we've been operating. We do have a website. Uh, interesting observation of the folks who request services. This many come through the website. Mm -hmm. This many come through the phone. Mm -hmm. So that's a learning. 
you know, it's not my kids. <laughs> it's my peers and folks. Um, so I want to make it easy. Mm -hmm. I don't want to make it, I don't want to, I don't want to create barriers, even though I might get confused sometime in my own schedule. Um, I'm happy to say, okay. knock on wood, that I haven't missed a ride or an mm. appointment yet. And that's what wakes me up in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. Ooh. I make sure I've got that covered tomorrow. So I haven't. And that to me is really an important personal piece. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a commitment. Uh, I am more anxious, and I hope this is responsible, I'm more anxious about making someone else late because I haven't scheduled things correctly than I would ever be about my own personal time frame. I was late to something by five minutes. I go, eh, yeah, that's Judd, you know, trying to do too much at one time, so he's late. But I, I am very sensitive about not doing that with someone else's obligations or time frame. Mm. So. I have one of the wonderful things I have right now is because I underestimate sometime the time of this appointment, and nobody can really estimate the time of appointments because it's all over the map. And I get in trouble. I call my wife. I say, Lori, can you pick up Nancy? Because I'm stuck and I'm not going to make it in time. Can you run and pick her up at the da 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 da? And eight out of ten times, okay, I'm free. I'll go pick that up. So that's a great uh, pressure valve uh, that I have that allows, in a way, allows me to get close to overscheduling without um, violating someone else's obligation. So that, again, I share that with you because that's an advantage of being small uh, that I wouldn't want to lose if I got too big. I've talked a lot about how we work. I, I want to just take a step back and, and share with you that the most important thing about Heart to Heart and what I'm trying to do is helping other people. Um, nobody ever said that helping others was easy. Mm. It was going to be a cakewalk, you know. Uh, I think you all know that. So the, the, the difficulties I talk about, I really mean to say, so what? Well, let's just come with the territory. If you want to help folks, you want to do something that's maybe a little unusual in terms of helping people, then that's what you've decided to do. That's the choice you've made, so figure it out. And the most rewarding thing that I have is when folks turn to me after a ride, after a conversation, one woman said, you know, you're the best therapy session I've had in a long time. I don't know that I want to take responsibility for that, by the way. Um, or a uh, very nice woman yesterday said to me, I never get out anymore. And not only Am I grateful that you took me to my doctor's appointment? This ride's been awesome. That's wonderful to me. That's, that's, I mean, that's a contribution to her day, maybe her week, but at least her day. And that's what's most important about Heart to Heart. Other questions or points of interest anyone has? If not, well, there are so many questions. Uh, so you want to stay small. I mean, you want to keep it so that you're going to be able to manage it. I want to stay personal, yep. If I, if I can grow it and still say, stay individualized and personal, if I could figure that out, I will do that. I, I, I don't want to say, I don't want to say stay small and say no all the time. That hurts too much. Uh -huh. that, that, that hurts me. Uh, to say, no, I can't help you. 
I, I had a request for a ride uh, this morning from a woman who has a very ill family member. Very ill. And requested a ride to, let's at least say, central Massachusetts. Mm. I can't do it. Mm. But I have a horrible time listening to her personal story saying, uh, I can't help you. Other questions? Yeah. Um, you're here, obviously, to spread the word about what you do. Are you looking for help? And if so, in what form? I mean, do you need people who, like, so say I call you and say, you know, I could take every Tuesday and set aside from 8 to 4. I'll do that one day a week, so I can be available. Is that the kind of thing you're looking for, or are you looking for anything like that? I am. I, I, I do want to just say I'm here because I was invited, and I'm grateful for the invitation. <laughs> I, I would love to have to work with more folks who are interested in serving others. I'm totally flexible on whatever you feel you're comfortable. If it's every Tuesday afternoon, if it's maybe this week and maybe not, if it's uh, Saturdays, it might sound odd, but I have number of folks who don't want to drive on Saturdays. So having someone who's willing to drive on Saturday is a good thing. I would love to have some folks in this community be willing to provide some rides because it's whatever time from York to here. Mm -hmm. So that, that um, this is and, and that's the nature of this stuff. It's really very local. Yeah. It's not even regional. It's, it's right. very local stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty flexible. Here's, if you're, it, it, for anyone who's interested in considering volunteering, I would ask you to take a look at the website, the Heart to Heart website. There's a section in there on volunteering and services and all the contact information. There's also a, a volunteer handbook and a driver handbook. They're not this thick. <laughs> They're very thin. I took others' work and made it much simpler. <laughs> but at least there's a bit of a framework for what we're about, you know. Um, there's an application online. Oh, application sounds like going to the Bureau of Motor Vehicles Department. No, this is a very simple application. It's a two-pager, uh, and, and it's really easy to do. And that application provides you the opportunity say, to say, I'm willing to do this, but I don't want to do this, and I'm willing to do this, and I'm willing to do it on Tuesdays from noon to noon. Four, but not other days of the week. And here's, here's also to respond to you. Here's a practical part of this. Um, I look at the driving schedule. I'm focused a little bit on driving. I look at the driving schedule every Friday. And either Friday or Saturday, I send out the trips that I need help with for the following week. Now. Understand that I'm already assigned, I've already assigned Judd to 40 hours of driving the following week. So I'm looking for places where I can't meet the needs. And I send that out to all the driver volunteers. And I, I send it out in a uh, generic way so that I'm not sending out people's individual information. 
uh, and I say, anyone willing to take these, please let me know. And those folks respond over the next day or two and say, for example, I'm willing to do the York to the York doctor's office to home on Tuesday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And so then I send them details of what, who the person is, the phone number, the address, what office they're going to. So it's really, on a weekly basis, it's here's what I need. Can you help me? And, you know, if you're going to be in Puerto Rico that week, it's probably not likely that uh, <laughs> you're going to pick up a ride, you know? Or maybe otherwise, sometimes uh, folks don't have other obligations, so they say, sure, I'll do two or three rides this week. I'll do, I'll do one on Monday, and I'll do the Thursday one, and I'll do the Friday morning one. And then I send them the details. So, pretty flexible. It's got to fit into, as a volunteer, and the, whatever the responsibilities with Heart to Heart have to fit into the rest of your life. Um, and it has to work for you, not just for Heart to Heart. So you were able to do that. I mean, you, you obviously saw the need from your background. And you you must have decided this is something that could work because there are so many people in need and these people were not um, invalids at home but basically it was just transportation that started this well i really started broadly about needs of older adults I, do, I did have in my mind, as you suggest, from my work at York Hospital, uh, what came back from community surveys time and time again mm. was transportation. Uh -huh. So I did have that sort of stuck in the back of my mind. Uh -huh. uh, but it, more recently in this year, it's been others suggesting to me what people need. It's not so much uh, my expertise on what folks need. I'm really trying to respond. Um, and if I might, from your question, just say this. Uh, I provide support for a lot of folks in their 80s and their 90s. But there is no age here. No one's asked me this. Uh, you know, do I ask people how old they are before I agree to give them a ride? No. No. Um, and it, it, the need is obviously a, a reflection of lots of different characteristics, not all of which is age. It, it's age and disability, it's age and family, age and connectedness, age and lots of things. So I'm, 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 I'm pretty open about that as as, as well. So. Other questions or things that could be helpful? What do you do if you want to go to Puerto Rico? <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't wanted to go to Puerto Rico, but that's not a very good answer to your question. Um, there, there will be a time when I need to say, or want to say, I'm going to be away for a week. Uh, and minimize scheduling. Hopefully I can do it in a way that service is still available for the other drivers, even though Judd's not available. I, I would hope to do that. But I, I will have to do it. I, I'll share this with you as a little personal quip. Personally, where do I lo love to spend my time? In the woods. I love nature. I'm a bit of a naturalist. Um, this past weekend, I spent some time tromping through the woods on a pair of snowshoes, and I love it. I don't love it to the exclusion of working with people, but I do love that. So I do need to figure out occasionally how to go tromp through the woods alone and 
talk with the gray squirrels, mm. but uh, I, so far I've been able to manage that. <laughs> touch the trees. Touch Make the sure trees. to touch the trees. You bet. You bet. Keep yourself grounded. Yes. <laughs> That's hard for me. Uh, well, if you hang on to the tree, yeah. it will ground you. Well, I, I've, I learned years ago, and I've loved being in the woods for many years, but I, I learned years ago that as much as I enjoy that, it is not enough for my heart. Mm -hmm. I need people. And I'm saying that from a selfish perspective. I need people, I need conversation, I need relationships, I need smiles, I need that acknowledgement, I need fundamentally to know I'm doing something worthwhile. Um, if I can do that and occasionally run out in the woods and listen to the birds, I'm all set. Mm -hmm. Both sides. Yep. Yeah. Yep. At least for me. Mm -hmm. At least for me. I commend you for what you've started. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, uh, I think it's working for people. I hope it's working and I hope I can figure out how to long term make it work for more, for more people and be more helpful. I hope I can figure out how to say yes more and figure out how to hardly ever say no. Mm. That, that would be uh, my mission statement. Well, for example, the person that you couldn't take to central Massachusetts, were you able to refer? I gave her several suggestions. Yeah. I gave her there some suggestions. Go. I don't know how good those suggestions yeah, but, were, you know but I gave, her, I gave her some suggestions. Yeah. Uh, hopefully one of them will work. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's sometimes uh, not so much transportation, but other issues. Folks will call me with questions. I really don't know. So I'll call folks who are expert. I'll, I'll, I'll call Southern Maine Agency on Aging, or I'll call the Center for Active Living, or I'll call the York Housing Authority. I'll call some folks who know much more about those issues than I do and say, give me a hand. Is there a way to get through this? And then call the person back and share that information with the person. And it's easy for you to do that, though, because you've had connections. Yes. So it makes it much smoother. Yep. And it's probably, it's, it's easier for me to do it than for them to do it. It's, it's not like rocket science that they couldn't do it, but it's easier for me to do it as Judd yeah. than it is, it yeah. is for them to do it. Sure. You know, so. Well, I also believe that it's a nice idea that you don't have to use social media so much because that's not it, it's, it's just, it's like a fad. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> and it's just wonderful that you can actually talk to people. I, I'm, I'm, I will also say that I'm glad I don't have to use social media yeah. as much because I'm not good at it and a lot of it I do not find that personally attractive. I sounds probably archaic, but I'd much rather spend a long time on the phone having a conversation, talking one-to-one, -one, listening to the expression of the voice and the tone of the voice and the individual. Um, so it, that's kind of a fit. Mm. Yeah. Well, thank you, Judge. Thank you. Thank you all. You're very patient, and I appreciate it. If you, if you or anyone you know has any questions, I'll leave some of these here. But the most important thing for contacting is the telephone number. <laughs> it's 361-7311. 361-7311. It's on our cards. It's on this. And uh, just pick up the phone and give me a call. Thank you.